Now today is the day that we open the box and tickle the polar bear cup. <laughs> so I managed to finally, you know, sort my room out and the setup out. And uh, yeah, it's ready for you to see. There's only like two boxes in here. It's another polar bear. It looks like he's been ironed. Now this is a job for more knife. Ooh, there's another polar bear cup in here. <laughs> So now you know that I've been sent an Amiga 600 and uh, the first thing I do is when I'm when I receive anything is open it out and explore inside so over to the workbench well not the literal workbench not this well then again this is literal as well so So here is the innards of the Amiga 600 and can you notice something? Do you notice something? Do you? Apollo themselves have sent me an Amiga 600 with a Vampire 600 version 2 inside it and I am absolutely excited about this. And there also seems to be an ID flash module installed here. Because here is the HDMI coming out of the, the expansion trap door and coming outside over here. which. I'm not too comfortable about because, you know, first of all, you know, it's awkward here and also it can be pulled and there's these sockets, I know that these um, PCB sockets are always, you know, delicate, so, and it can be pulled off the freaking board. Okay, so here we have the HDMI output, and at the moment it only supports high resolution output, so for low resolution things and games and applications, sound tracker and things like this, we're gonna have to use the RGB output. Now here we have an SD card slot, a micro SD card slot. Now this at the moment it's for very fast, it's actually faster than the Amiga's internal one. Uh, this is a fast storage device only, uh, you cannot boot from this. This will also be up, you know, eventually updated so we can you know, boot from this which will be fantastic, we have a faster, fast booting, you know, Amiga. Okay, so the rest of the stuff we have over here. Let's see what uh, I've already been inside here. Here, here's my 600 trapdoor, <laughs> which will be, you know, put it back on. You'll see my plans. What's this? Oh, it's a HDMI port, the socket. So here we have a HDMI repeater, and it seems to be an amplifier, which, you know, if the signal kind of like goes, gets too weak in between, so it allows you to use, it amplifies it, so it allows you to use longer cables. So let's go put that aside and check, this seems to just be a socket, a socket to socket. No, no. Ah, freaking more stuff. Okay. Okay, just in case I'm updating the firmware and I end up breaking the board, breaking the vampire, I can actually recover it using this. So, I have no idea how to freaking use it, but I will find out. Let's hope I don't need to find out. <laughs> and that's of course the lead for it. So let's put this very safe somewhere. I need to get a box with my Amiga stuff. I was actually going to get one of these, but hey, thanks so much. <laughs> they sent me one. Woohoo, yes. This thing. The badge. And this seems to be an SD, oh yes, an SD um, extender. Because you stick this inside the SD card socket on the actual vampire board, and then you have this, which you can you know, mount somewhere outside. Okay, so I have plans here. <laughs> now, this is my second Amiga 600, and um, you will know about the first one that I recently got at Recap. And it doesn't have a disk drive and it's got like no parts and stuff like that. So that is going to be a secondary one. I guess when Apollo did contact me, he recommended I get an expansion board, that one megabyte expansion board, with an RTC clock. A real-time clock. clock. <laughs> with like a real-time clock module on it so that, you know, it gets the time. And I want to do that. I want a freaking Amiga which knows that it's not 1978. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so I am never ever gonna use this uh, RF out, so what I am going to do is this RF modulator, take everything out very carefully of course, and um, desolder the modulator from the board, and you have that hole there, right? So I'm gonna mount this socket there, 
so that I have HDMI out just there. A solution than this coming outside here. I was trying to capture the video by connecting the HDMI to my capture device, which is the Elgato HD60. Now this didn't work at all, and I remembered that a while back Mikal from Distri the TV contacted me about my setup because he couldn't capture from his Indivision AGA to his Elgato. The Elgato apparently doesn't support this type of signal, however, I remember that my Flylink upscaler has a HDMI input. So I tried that and hey, it showed up on my Elgato. Relieved. <laughs> yeah, I was. I'm figuring that it must convert the signal, thankfully. When booting up for the first time, this thing looked absolutely amazing to me. I was told it was Apollo OS, which I'm booting into, and yeah, it looks freaking cool. <laughs> I always wanted a 68060 processor, but now I have a 68080 with RTG. There is a demo I've seen around which impressed me, and uh, I saw it a while ago, and as far as I know, it requires a 68 or 60 accelerated Amiga, and it just didn't work. And that's when I realized that I don't have enough chip RAM. It's just a usual stock 1 megabyte on my 600. I'd recently bought a 1 megabyte upgrade for my other 600 the same time I got it recapped, and I read that it doubles the chip RAM, not the fast RAM. So I quickly install this and hey, I got two megabytes of chip RAM and I have that demo working perfectly. Fantastico! Okay, so I'm here and I've got something exciting to kind of like test here. I came across this channel which was actually uh, demonstrating a Milky Tracker. Yeah, I went out and I searched for this and I searched for that same mod that was in the demonstration because I like it. And um, yeah, I just, I'm gonna try it now. My CPU is 6840. No, it's not, it's 80, you freaking liar. Why? Freak? That's not something. That's so cool. <gasps> Oh, do you know what? This is actually... <laughs> this is um, as uh, intuitive as Soundtracker Pro too. I love the interface. Where's the sample editor? It's here. No, that's thingy. How, how, how do I go? <gasps> we save it as a mod. Well, obviously not save the whole thing as a mod, but this is so cool. I found a tracker that I can use. I'm so excited. I can't even speak. I hope the dude actually um, continues um, with you know improving this and later versions and stuff because this is a good port and it works on my Amiga. This is Amiga music now. So I can, yeah, <gasps> yeah, mod plug tracker, um, the latest mod plug tracker opens uh, Sound Tracker Pro 2 files now, just the recent version has got support. So I can, what I can do is I can load um, Sound Tracker Pro 2 mods in mod plug tracker and I can um, uh, save it as XM, load it in here and add more channels to my music <laughs> and it still be classed as Amiga music because I'm doing it in Amiga. So, yes, I I just need to kind of, <laughs> sorry, I'm making stupid noises that I'm not meaning to. I just need to learn these commands. It's like 850s and stuff. What the freak? Yeah, I'm used to like more. So it's like, that's new to me, but the rest of it is like, I think I can do. <gasps> you can copy paste just like this. Oh, 
thanks so much to whoever freaking ported this across. What's your name? I forgot. Where is it? I, it's it's some name. Well, of course the the. <laughs> I knew his name. I just forgot. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. The rest of the video is gonna be a chill out talk about Vampire, the latest firmware news and plans which Apollo have told me, and I'm gonna talk about the Amiga and in general chilling out with you all with demos and music while talking about my views on Vampire and FPGA and the Amiga scene and community in general. So, do gravity or something and let's chill! So what I'm going to do is just chill out here and talk about the vampire itself and also updates. Firstly, unless you're using WHD load, which um, what WHD load does is creates the environment specifically for each individual game so that so that that runs, you know, just as it should, you know, all the makers. So you're going to have, unless you're using WHD load, you're not going to be able to play many games directly from the disc. Uh, and that is because the vampire is too fast for the blitter. You know, it's going to appear out of sync, graphics are going to be corrupt and all this, and games will just appear fast. And I've had that happen. <laughs> I've had that happen with the Akka. So it's not just, you know, something special, especially for the vampire. Uh, sorry, it's not just something unique to the vampire. It's something, you know, the more you upgrade or accelerate your Amiga, the more issues you're going to come you know, like this. So to get around this, what you have to do is, you know, go into the boot menu. When you reboot, you click the two mouse buttons and then you disable CPU caches. And um, it takes the, um, the Vampire 600 down to stock Amiga 1200 speed. So basically you have, you know, your Amiga 600 being turned into a, a beefed up Amiga 1200, which is kind of cool. So vampire firmware. Now currently we run called 2.5 core and that is I think that's the official one that's released now. However, I'm on gold 2.7 beta. And that is the gold 2.7 has faster IDE and it has hardware sprites and I think I think it's got a lot it's got a, quite a few things actually I cannot remember exactly what I also have been speaking to the uh, the Apollo dude and he said that you know there will be gold 3 out will it be gold 2.8 then after that they're gonna skip to gold 3 core gold 3 will have AGA support for you know old cards even these so basically your your Amiga 600 or your Amiga 500 will be completely like Amiga 1200 moment also the HDMI does not have Polis sound integrated in it you know you have to access Polis sound separately however in gold 3 that is going to be sound is going to be via the HDMI but what's exciting me more is that at the moment you have to use you know two displays or you know one display with you know two switch two inputs so 
the Lorus stuff is gonna have to be at the RGB like normal Amiga, the RGB port. And then you're gonna have the HDMI port, which is gonna be the high res RTG stuff. So what's gonna happen after Go 3, as far as you know, uh, the Paula dude told me, is uh, the Lora stuff is gonna be view. You're gonna be able to view it through the HDMI, which is I'm excited about that. You know, that'd be pretty freaking cool. So it just saves switching displays, you know, things like that. So yeah, that's uh, that's something to look forward to. So hopefully my SCART Switchbox is gonna have a free port. So um, it won't be taken up, I will be able to, you know, do whatever with it, even kind of like, you know, God forbid, add another system. <laughs> I don't think I need any more, I've got enough, so... So when will Goal 3 actually be out? Well, I had to ask the dude because you know I'm excited about this. There's like lots of nice things, including the, you know, Loras on the HDMI, which is you know I cannot wait for that. Uh, but the dude said that uh, there is no fixed, you know, time or specific time period where Go Three will be out because how they work is they will, you know, they'll work on it and then they will test, they will test, they will test, and then they will once it's everything is good, then they will release it. So it's just kind of like. As, as it goes, there's no like targets or anything like this. So yeah, it'll come around just like everything else does. Now, my views on the vampire itself, well, put it this way. Summer 2016, what made me get my 1200 again? It was the vampire because the upcoming news about the vampire 1200 now it was always my dream to have an accelerated amiga i always wanted a 060 i mean back then i actually had a blizzard ppc uh, 68040 with b vision graphics card so it was just like you know wow i wanted i i hadn't also had you know a stock amiga 1200 and 600 next to it so you know there was a best of both worlds thing going on there but yeah after that after the Amiga days were over, it was just like WinUAE and getting the best setup on WinUAE and FSUAE and so forth. So I wondered, when I heard about the Vampire, I was just like, I'm gonna get a 1200 because I don't wanna be bothered with the emulators. I wanna actually, the real hardware and, you know, set myself a good system up, good Amiga system up. So yeah, Vampire actually made me click buy on that. So my view on the vampire itself is that, I mean, I've heard so much around, so much in the groups, people's opinions about it, people not considering it an Amiga, people saying that, oh, you might as well, I've heard somebody say, you might as well just use FSUA or WinUA or something, you know, it's just the same thing. And I don't agree with that. I, in fact, I strongly disagree with that because WinUA and FSUA is emulation. It's at software level, whereas the vampire is at hardware level. And that actually, you know, as far as my understanding is what you're doing with um, software emulation is that you have a completely set architecture, like a completely different architecture to the Amiga. And what you're doing is you're creating software to manipulate that, you know, that architecture to kind of go a certain way so you're like kind of like forcing it to do things that it's not built to do you know that's not shaped to do it's my visual way of <laughs> it's my way of visualizing things so you're using a lot of processing power trying to trying to make that architecture go in a certain direction like like a pc or a mac architecture and make it you know force it into the into being an amiga and that is, you know, software manipulating it, you know, software hovering above it, manipulating it. However, FPGA, what that is, is that you have shaped the actual hardware into the architecture of the Amiga. So it may not be the, the actual ICs and chips themselves. However, it will be shaped like that. I don't actually class that as emulation. You know what I mean? It's at hardware level. I actually wonder about the statement real Amiga. What is real Amiga? I mean, some people um, don't class the Vampire as the real Amiga. Some people don't class the OS4 and the Aeon systems as an Amiga. They're just saying it's not. I've heard someone um, 
mentioned that there was somebody who, who those people who were like classing the Blizzard PPC accelerator in the accelerated Amiga as not being an Amiga. I'm sorry, but I would freaking argue that it is. I mean, I was on an Amiga back then when I was doing my soundtracker stuff. Sorry, I will not take that as a, you know, it was an Amiga because I say so. <laughs> I had an Amiga tower back then. <laughs> but what is a real Amiga then? Is it real Amiga just like, you know, would, would those people class Amiga, real Amiga to be like a stock Amiga? With like, you know, you just put discs in and play games, that's it. You know what I'm saying? What is a real Amiga? What isn't? Where does that, where, where is that line drawn with regards to this? I would like to know. Please discuss in the comments. Please. I would like to know what people are thinking about this. Me personally, the vampire, I would class it as a real Amiga. I would class the vampire as an accelerator simply because, let's say for example, you have an EEPROM chip, uh, sorry, you have a, a kickstart ROM chip and you are, you dump that ROM image, you dump that chip image into a file, the ROM image into a file, and then what you're doing is you're getting, you know, a modern EEPROM chip that's empty. And you're programming the EEPROM chip, so basically you're shaping that new modern EEPROM chip as a Kickstart ROM chip, and it will work exactly the same at hardware level, like an identical thing. I would consider personally consider that still an Amiga, that new one. Would you? Do you know what I'm saying? Are you talking about the actual original chips? If it's not the original chip, then it's not the Amiga. Is that what it is? Because I wouldn't see any way for the Amiga to progress. Commodore is gone. Escom. Eh. <laughs> these companies are not gonna come back. Commodore is not gonna come back. None of these are gonna, you know, the Amiga won't advance if we keep kind of nitpicking like this. Do you know what I'm saying? If we don't advance like this, it's like. People will just have- and the Amigas are gonna run out at some point. There are only so many made, and there's so many people who are wanting them. This is, this is sought after so much. I mean, if someone creates an FPGA system that is identical, like the Mist, it's identical to the Amiga. It's got the custom- as far as I know, it's got the custom chipset and it's got the custom chips of the Amiga and everything. And it's just, you know, all the chips are in a modern casing. So, I personally would class that as an Amiga. No, maybe not in its original form, but in spirit, in soul, it's an Amiga. And if it works exactly the same as it, you know, as I said earlier on, its emulation is different. I don't class emulation as true Amiga because it's just software manipulating hardware, making it freaking grind itself silly, trying to go into a certain direction which is not shaped for. But you are shaping the architecture as an original Amiga, therefore it's got to be original Amiga. And Vampire is just that, the chip. I know I'm getting very passionate about this, it's just... That's my thoughts when I've, all this time, when I've seen people, you know, jib-jab about... <laughs> you know, it's kind of like... I'm like, no, why? This is my understanding of FPGA. If I'm wrong about this, Please let me know. Educate me. Don't mock me. Educate me. That's what the freaking point of the whole community is. What am I got in my hand? I don't know. <laughs> so, just kind of... I got my fidget cube here, so it's like, my brain's like working, you know. It's like, thoughts, rants, <laughs> hunger, rage. So that's basically my point, really, you know, is... I just class the vampire as an accelerator. It's an extravagant accelerator. It's doing a lot in there. It's kind of taking over even though the Ami it still needs the Amiga to kind of run. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sorry, but I just class it as an accelerator. You know, it's, it's accelerating a darn Amiga to, an, uh, to a 68080. <laughs> if you wanted to, you know, get a 6806 processor now, 
You're gonna have to- you look on the prices on eBay? I saw a Blizzard PPC, 68 or 60, going for something like 2 grand, 2k or something. Just for the freaking card. Why? You have to sell your limbs, <laughs> you know, to kind of like pay for it. I don't know. I don't know who would buy that. I certainly freaking wouldn't. Do you know what I'm saying? And Blizzard, uh, sorry, B-Vision graphics card on top of that. Who's gonna pay those stupid prices? So why not, in my view, why not let Amiga move forward a bit? Let people have what they wanted back then. Okay, my thoughts with regards to the, um, the vampire and oh, with regards to people, not the vampire, with regards to people saying all this, you know, ranting on about not a real Amiga and so forth. Whatever you class as a real Amiga, get it. You're free to do that. But don't try to convince somebody who's enjoying it. I've seen this happen. Don't try to convince somebody who's enjoying it that it's not a real Amiga. Don't ruin their fun. Because if you're doing that, you're being toxic. And there's no need for it. Why do you need to? You'd be content with your own Amiga. You wouldn't need to have... You, you wouldn't feel the need to prove to somebody or prove to yourself that's what you're trying to do. Prove to yourself that this is not an Amiga. Because if you're trying so hard to ruin somebody else's fun, that means you secretly want it. And I know there's gonna be, you know, people hating me for this. But it's true. Anyway. Without creating, you know, a freaking war zone in my comments. <laughs> which I'm sure, you know, this these comments... I'm sorry, this is just how I am. I'm... When somebody, when someone's being unjust in some way, whether it's towards me or towards my friends or towards, you know, whoever, I will point it out. I will just say, no, this is not right. I'm not afraid to say, no, that's not right. What you're doing is not right. And I can, you know, extract the psychology and kind of like throw it at the person <laughs> behind it because it annoys the freak out of me. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, they shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Anyway. I'll stop being, you know, <laughs> ranty now. Where did it go? I need to fix it. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> so that's pretty much my view on, you know, the Amiga, the vampire, the community. There's gonna be, you know, upcoming videos about this, of course. I'm I'm not done with that system. Uh, that has Apollo OS running on it. So I'm gonna be installing my own OS as well. Of course, you know, I'm gonna be keeping that Apollo OS. But I'm gonna be installing, you know, 3.9 on it. And, you know, and also I'm gonna be trying um, Amkit's AK, AK Reel. Now, the, the dude Fernando, he, he's contact, contacted me and asking me to kind of, um, you know, try out his new AK Real uh, operating system. I'm excited about that because it requires RTG and it looks pretty freaking good. So I'm going to be demonstrating that. That's going to be an upcoming, you know, video and on actual hardware. And what I might actually do is try to do it on O30 processor as well. So yeah, this is going to be like you know two. There's so many upcoming things that I just want to do with you and share and you know and um show you as well so it's kind of you know there's, there's so much to come so do stick around also do subscribe if you haven't done so already and thanks so much for the likes and the shares do leave your thoughts in the comments below don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more for now i will say adios for their generous donations, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons Casual Commodore, Robert Minnis, Gadget UK164, Hayes Maker, Rudiger Stiedel, Karsten Lervad, Thomas Muller, Al Hunt, Boris Matishin, Matt Shepkar, James Burr, Sophie Leroy, Jan Beta, Thomas Brezina, Sean O'Keefe, Matthew, Cameron Armstrong, Rofe Otterstein, Lannis Johansson, Anthony Whittington, Jim Leonard, and Carrie S. Turner. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below as well as links to my patrons' websites or YouTube channels.